A reading from the book of Matthew. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The word of God for the people of God. So we call upon uh, Professor Hayran Kim Craig for the second reading and for the sermon. Sorry, Hayran, hey, could you un unmute your microphone? I'm sorry. Sorry. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, open our minds, hearts, and soul to all that these words of life offer us. I am beautiful and black, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the pants of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not gaze at me because I am dark, because the sun has gazed on me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. It's all good to see you. And uh, we are at the mercy of the Zoom and all the uh, technology connections. So be with us. And even if we, we um, make mistakes, I think that's a part of who we are as human beings. Unusual times call for unusual Bible passages. There is much that makes this passage in the Song of Songs unusual. For one thing, it is not usually preached. What a joy it is, therefore, to meditate on it with you today. The text poses a very basic question. Who is I? when it is said, I am black and beautiful. The passage is clear, the I is a woman and she is black and beautiful. We know right off the bat that she has a strong sense of identity. This woman knows who she is, yet she's not free from societal prejudices and racial discriminations. She is actually targeted. 
people gazed at her because she's dark. Society puts her down because she has darker skin. Sadly, there's no surprise in this. Racism is blunt. It stings like a sunburn. The verse six, do not gaze at me because I am dark, because the sun has gazed on me, suggests that a kind of racial prejudice people played out in different ways. Her skin is exposed to the sun, which suggests that she works outside. The next line gives a more fulsome picture. She works in her mother's son's vineyard. She's a laborer, like a pageant, working for someone else's farm. There is a power differential at play. There is an inequity. His sons were able to belittle her and subjugate her to work for their benefit. And this exploitation is common in the world of the Hebrew Bible as maternal brothers exercise control over their sisters in patriarchal families. But as I said earlier, there is something quite unusual about the Song of Songs. Unlike many books in the Bible, scholars have noticed that female voices make up more than 60% of the text. According to biblical scholar, Athala Brenner, the female voices in the Song of Songs are, I quote, bolder, more playful, more outspoken, serious, and artistic than the voices attributed to males, the end of the quote. The female voice is prevalent in the entire book of the Song of Songs. The poem sings of a different world, dreaming racial justice, labor equity, sacred dignity and seeking relationships of love. Song of Songs is not only a beautiful poem, but a powerful text to preach about the plague of racism. Uh, the unfortunate fact though, is that the chapter one of the Song of Songs that we read is excluded in the revised common lection. Why do you think that this text failed to be included in the election. Perhaps because he was talking about erotic love with physical and sensual expressions too scandalous to be included? Or because it gorgeously features the outspoken woman of color who said she's black and beautiful? Or because it discloses the economic exploitation of the system the benefits, the wealthy and the privileged? Or perhaps because this poem is not deemed theological enough since God does not appear at all in the entire book. The stakes are high when we do not use the text like Song of Songs for preaching. Preachers who follow the lectionary all the time are spared from having to deal with a text that addresses the issues that are critical in the biblical time and are critical now. Summer is a good time to pick up books that you don't usually read. I wonder what books you have discovered. I myself had an opportunity to, to read a book by Nuor Naga. The title of the book is Washi's Praise. The author Naga was born in Philadelphia, raised in Dubai, studied in Toronto, and now lives in Alexandria, Egypt. In this book, Naga's protagonist is Cuckoo, a young, poor immigrant woman living in Toronto. Washi's Praise is a work of art that captures the spiritual longing and romantic love of one who is a devout Muslim involved in an affair with a married man. She bargains with God to end her poverty and loneliness and asks, 
What does it mean to pray when giving your body to a man who cannot keep it? How long can I or a homeless love survive on the streets? Cuckoo reminded me of the woman in the Song of Song. Because her story is a story of love under the stingy glare of stereotypes. Naga's work makes room for female desire, companionship, and the consolations of faith. She also speaks of the hard reality of life. Naga writes, hungry bodies weigh more than full bodies because need is heavier than greed, heavier than the smugness of satisfaction. Jesus was interested in hungry bodies and the working conditions of exploited laborers. Today, we read one about the vineyard workers who were all paid the same no matter how long they worked. What the landlord did does not conform to today's capitalistic logic though. The longer you work, higher your wage should be. The faster your job is done, the more reward you should receive. Yet the kingdom of God, the realm of God, does not follow that logic. In fact, the upside down object is proclaimed. The last shall be first. Yes, yes. We as disciples of Jesus also dream of that world where the last shall be first. But the COVID-19 world exposes otherwise. In Toronto, for example, black and racialized people make up 83% of the reported COVID-19 cases and the number is growing. Windsor area has the highest rate of COVID in the province of Ontario. You wonder why? I wonder why. And I found out because of migrant workers in Limington. Every year, 50,000 migrant workers travel from Mexico, Jamaica, the Caribbean countries and other parts of Asia to come to Canada to harvest fruits and vegetables. My family saw some of these workers harvesting peaches in the Niagara region this past summer. We bought several baskets of fresh peaches and plums. Many of these labor end up in Livington, the tomato capital of Canada and the greenhouse of capital of the world. This year, about 1,500 of them got the COVID-19. Three have died. The problem isn't the migrant workers. It is the employers, the national borders, the labor law and the unjust power willed over the lives of migrant farm workers on a daily basis. The invisible COVID-19 virus has exposed racism, poverty and social inequity in Canada and around the world. While the COVID-19 global pandemic is unprecedented in our generation, the correlation between the medical disease and the disease of the social ills of racism is nothing new. This racist system is what makes us sick. Even if there is a vaccine of this coronavirus, unless, unless we mend the system, there will be people who are pushed to the last, continue to get sick and die. If these social ills are invisible to us most of the time, it's because we, I, and you, we benefit from them. If we can afford having sumptuous tomatoes with corn and peaches, without even thinking of those who work under the heat of the sun, despite getting sick with the COVID-19, you and I are complicit and complacent. 
we could enjoy a summer worth of fresh meals at the price of these workers, we may be like the mother's sons in the Song of Songs. We may be the ones who complain about other workers who came later in the day at the vineyard in the parable of Jesus. A story from Livingston may help to see their lives close to our heart and find how God is at work. Joan Gray throws a party for the migrant workers every year. She books a local hall, recruits volunteers to prepare meat, rice, and beans. At the party, the gospel music is playing. The workers are playing games. They laugh, they cry, and they tell stories. One migrant worker said like this, this is a feeling like we are back home. I get to see a lot of black people and say, oh, I feel like I'm home. I am in Jamaica. Gray said loud and clear, all these beautiful vegetables and fruits that we have on our table, where did it come from? These are migrant workers who are working to pick it. They give it to us and we should give back to them. And I, I, as I listened to Grace and the, her beautiful contribution, I also learned about the living conditions of migrant workers. And some of them haven't been coming for more than 25 years, season after season. When they come, they sleep in bunk houses or 16 people rent one house that has mold and cockroaches. The annual party does help humanizing their otherwise dehumanized life. This small but mighty act of kindness of gray and other people is good. But the problem of migrant worker is systemic, right? It stings like a sunburn. We must confess this as sin and examine the issue on a structural level, from immigration law to corporate profit-driven policies. So for this, I would like to invite you to watch the following. It's on the slide. This documentary was created by Min Sik Lin, who is an associate professor at Okat University. The documentary powerfully exposes the plight of the, these issues. And uh, the documentary is actually played in the TVO, so that's beautiful. And they themselves really strongly speak the truth. And what happened? The second link that is shown in the slide is also uh, found in strike, Scholar Strike Canada that happened on September 9th and 10th. And it would be really good to watch that session along with the documentary. And I highly recommend you watch me. So what else? God is inviting us to engage this issue that stings like a sunburn. As we wrestle with sacred text confront the various forms of oppressions and continue to study in a theological school. Preaching outside the lectionary if necessary and preaching more boldly and explicitly on racism are great start, which may lead us to create a ripple effect to the whole life at Emmanuel. We, all of us have a part to play combating racism institutionally. This semester, we have been going through a college-wide and community-wide consultation. Next week, for example, there is a town hall meeting regarding a document to articulate our commitment to make racism and other forms of oppression visible while we work towards dismantling them. 
And this document uses fours as a guide, dignity, equity, accountability, and responsibility with the acronym of DEAR. What do we hold dear? The, one of, the woman of the song of the songs knows what she holds dear. I am black and beautiful. Let us hold ourselves and one another dear as well. Is my prayer and hope that as we do this work, hard work of labor together, we'll remember this woman in the Song of Songs. May the hokuma, the wisdom of God that went into the Song of Songs continue us to teach about sacred dignity and just equity. May the parable of Jesus that we heard today continue to challenge us holding ourselves accountable to the exploitation of the migrant workers and encourage us to take responsibility in mending and healing the world that is wounded by racism. May it be so. Amen. Thanks be to God.